the latest Blender 2.83 release, which has a new feature added into Blender. It allows users to import raw VDB volumes and it right into Blender. So this is perfect for us Houdini users because Houdini has a very sophisticated uh, pyro simulation or even physical simulation. And what I'm mainly focusing on in this video is the pyro simulations, all the volumes that uh, Houdini can generate for me. We can take our pyro simulation. That's um, so in this video, I'm going to use this pyro simulation from the cup and export it out as raw VDB data and import it back into Blender and render it out using the super fast EV rendering engine. So let's dive right into the smoke simulation. Now I'm not going to go over the details of how this simulation was set up in anything like that. I'm just going to show you what each part is though. So you know what I'm talking about and you can follow along. So this is just the initial body of the smoke simulation. So let's just put a box around that. And all this, so let's put render this. So this is the initial body and this gets fed into the .NET, which is our pyro simulation. Now I have this cache, so I don't need to render it out. So I'm just gonna cancel that. It is a very simple pyro simulation. It's, uh, but I'm not gonna go over the details of it. I have my DOP import node. So this extracts all the pyro simulation, all the data out and put it into this context. This is my file cache. So I can run this. This is what the simulate the pyro, the smoke simulation looks like. Okay. Now, in order to export this smoke simulation as a raw VDB file. So that's what we're aiming for. So after the DOP import node, we need to export the volume primitives that we're going to use to set up the materials and shading. That's the good stuff that we have, that we get from the DOP import from the pyro simulation. So if we head over here to the geometry spreadsheet and click this primitive. Remember, volume uh, attributes are stored in primitives. So each primitive can store, each volume primitive can store a scalar value and that's the density, temperature, velocity, and heat information. Now for velocity, since um, there's three scalar values, it's velocity is stored as a vector. So there's X, Y, and Z. So there's three scalar values. It will be stored as three separate primitives, three separate volume primitives. Now, in order to export our pyro simulation out as raw VDB files, right after the DOP import field, oh, so right after this, I'm going to drop down a convert VDB node. This will convert our volume into VDB. Houdini has two types of volumes. There's the Houdini standard volumes and the VDB volumes. Houdini has two types of volumes, the standard Houdini volume and VDB volumes. VDB volumes is implemented using OpenVDB's C++ library, which was made by DreamWorks and is widely used nowadays. I think most or maybe even all of Houdini's volume functionalities is already being implemented as VDBs for better performance. VDB is able to utilize the power of all the cores in our system. So if you have a multi-core system like a quad core, dual core, or even a hex core system, or even more, you can definitely feel the fast performance of VDBs. So how do we actually distinguish be between a Houdini volume and a VDB volume in Houdini. So this is the top import, right? All, it has all the, uh, this is our power simulation extracted out. If we come here, click the eye, and we'll have this, I'm just gonna pin this here. So right here, you'll see, uh, sorry, 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 I'm just gonna put it on the side and I'm gonna open up this one. So right here, I have a convert VDB note. So we know that this is converted into a VDB because I have convert to VDB selected here. So let's take a look here. We eye this and pin it here. Let's put this side by side. Oh, uh, okay. Actually, I'll just... Now, the one on the left, the top import, it says volumes. There's six primitives to the volumes. So we know that this is a volume. So this top import is a Houdini standard volume. And this one over here, 
after we convert it into a VDB, we know this is a VDB. And besides that, it says VDB here as well. So there's six primitives to the VDB. This is incredibly handy. This, I don't know when this was implemented in here, but before they didn't have that written there and you kind of had to guess. So this is very convenient to have. Let's just remember that you do need it to be in VDB format in order to export it out from Houdini and import it into Blender. If you export the Houdini volumes, it won't work. Uh, Blender won't be able to read it. Now our, our pyro simulation has a lot of data that comes with it like like the density the velocity the temperature and the heat this is essential in setting up the materials and shading the volume for example as, as uh, the higher the temperature in the pyro you want the color to i don't know get brighter or redder more red more bright more orange i don't know so this all this information is very important in shading now you want to export it out uh, in the VDB format as well. So in the convert VDB node up here in the group, you can specify what you want to export, what volume primitives you want to export just by putting the at name equals and the volume primitive name at name equals. This is saying, this is referring to this column in the spreadsheet, the name column or the name volume attribute, the primitive attribute. I want to take all the primitive attributes that match this name. So that's what this is saying. Now, in our case, we just want everything. So I want the density, the temperature, the heat and the velocity. So I just put everything here. Next off, you throw down the file cache. You throw down a file cache in order to write it all out. So we need to write out all this, uh, all the VDB files. So let me drop down a file cache. So this is what your normal file cache looks like. Let's hook it up here. Now you can see here, this, this is the default name for the file cache, bgeo.sc. Now that's the, the default value. If we are writing VDB files, we can't use that. We need to change this to .vdb. So that's what I have here. So .vdb, this is the only thing you have to change. And you need to keep the dollar sign F because that represents the frame number. You wanna write out every single VDB data for every single frame. And the dollar sign OS is just the name of this note. So it'll say coffee underscore smoke that will replace this dollar sign OS and then the frame name and then dot VDB. So after you're, you have that done, just click save to disk and it will look like this. So you get a bunch of files that end with BDB. Okay. Let's hop over to blender. So I have it opened here for starters. Let's get rid of this default queue. Well, it's already selected. If you don't see this orange highlight here, that means it's not the cube is not selected. So this is what it looks like when it's not selected. Left click the cube and just hit delete on the keyboard. Okay, so let's import our VDB. I'm just going to deselect everything. And then mouse is hovering over the view, 3D viewport. Press shift A. Now, it, a menu will pop up and it'll ask you what do you want to add? Well, we want to add a volume and we want to import our open VDB volume. So let's select this. I'm just going to go to this. So here, here's our volume, uh, our volume VDB frames. Now I want to look at this as a list. Okay. So let's select this. You can do this to select it, but hey, it's not selecting, right? So just pick one one file and then on your keyboard, press A while the mouse is hovering over this. It'll select everything in the folder. And after you have that, come here, import open VDB volume. Hey, I don't see anything. Well, let's go over here to the play, to the uh, timeline. 
and advance this playhead forward. So just like Houdini, you can just click and drag this. You can click ahead to any frame you want. And in order to play the animation, just press the spacebar. Okay, and to stop it or to pause it, just press the spacebar again. Or you can use this these controls down here. Play, pause, rewind, goes to the first frame. Okay, let's let's just keep it on here. In the next video, I'll take this project a little further and demonstrate how to create a volume material in Blender. I'll show you how to use the velocity attribute to drive the volume material to get more interesting results. The next video is designed for Houdini users wanting to check out Blender. And I often reference Houdini's UI to Blender's UI for easier understanding. Please check out the next video and see for yourself just how fast Eevee is. If you're completely new to Blender, please check out my Blender UI tutorial video first, which will get you all the basics on Blender 2.83's redesigned interface. Thank you for watching and sticking to the end.